we're doing a few updates on his iPad. Call this meeting to order. It's being Tuesday, December the 20th, 2022, Woodfin uh, Town Council Board meeting. Uh, first item is approval of the agenda. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda as submitted? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Next item is a consent agenda. Shannon. Um, thank you, Mayor. I'll just keep it really brief. I think the um, descriptions of the consent agenda items are pretty <coughs> straightforward in the staff report. But the one thing I just wanted to draw everybody's attention to was item number five, approval of the 2023 meeting schedule. If you could, if you haven't already, please take a close look at that and make sure the budget work session dates get on your calendar. <coughs> um, also, just to confirm, we are planning a January 26th retreat for the town council. Um, I'm putting together some some agenda ideas um, for you all but you know this is your retreat so if you, any of you have any ideas or thoughts or things you would like to see please feel free to share those with me and i'll see what we can do about getting that included also and i, I think it's planning for a one day you know maybe a nine to three or four o'clock kind of time or something like that lunch included what we have in mind. Where? I think here. Okay. We don't have to do it here, but if, again, if you all have any ideas you'd like to hold it someplace else, you can certainly turn that. Okay, any further comments? Have a motion on the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, moving on to public comment, and we have uh, two people signed up. First one is Peggy Lyle. Peggy, you come up and identify yourself like we don't know who you are, but anyhow, for the record. So, what we do? I'm Peggy Lyle, and the other half of the call is Peggy Lyle. Um, I have two 
questions. One is about the old Chandler Lumber Company on Merriman, just across from um, uh, Reynolds Village, and the uh, uh, ugliness of it to our community, but also the hazard potential for anyone who might walk or go play on that property. Is there any way the town has influence over who owns it to have something done? My first question. Second question is about the streets in Sunny Ridge. I turned a few days ago up Ruckin Ridge and had to go into the grass because somebody was barreling down at this stop sign in front of, in, in, in the middle of the road. And that is not uncommon on Ruckin Ridge, but particularly on Sunny Ridge. People go around this, the road in the middle of the road and sometimes you have to get as far as over as possible to avoid a head-on collision. And some of the members of the community have put rocks in their, on the edge, so you can get in those rocks if you want. Anyway, is, the next question is, is there any way we can get a white stripe down those roads um, to maybe keep people in their lane? Thank you. What did you say they were doing on in the middle of the road. They drive in the middle of the road, going around the curves. Oh. And all. And yeah, oh, I misunderstood. I thought something they were working on something in no, the middle of the road. Resident of people going on the roads just don't stay on the sides <clears throat> of the roads. I think we all share your concern about the horrible lum old lumberyard site on Merriman. Uh, it might not be a bad idea, Shannon, just to say the reason why we can't condemn it and clean it up. I don't know if I know enough about it just yet to be able to respond to that. I'd like to maybe look into it okay. and see what can be considered. I, I knew that there were some development applications being considered along that corridor. I'm not sure if they're taking right now. Okay. So I might have to just do a little research on that. Thank you. Okay, the next person. And I can't read this, but they live at 33 Summit. Oh, that's not, I signed up on the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dave. Hey. Okay, so you don't want to. No, I don't want to comment on it. Okay. <laughs> Any other public comment from anybody? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to presentation and reports. First one is a guest presentation by Dr. Rob Jackson, Buncombe County School Superintendent. Glad to have you on board. and. Uh, up and make yourself at home. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Vice Mayor, members of the Town Council, Madam Town Manager. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to spend just a couple of moments introducing myself to share with you uh, my incredible excitement, uh, feeling of uh, just being absolutely blessed and quite frankly indebted to have the opportunity to return home. I grew up in Buncombe County. I'm very proud to have done so and started my career in education working as a school secretary and as a uh, summer custodian and driving bus at Charles C. Bell Elementary School for becoming a teacher and a principal and then this is my ninth year serving as a superintendent and so having the opportunity to return home to serve our school system is indeed a blessing and so this evening I wanted to take just a moment to share with you our school system on behalf of our Board of Education, our great appreciation for the partnership that we have with the town of Woodland. We recognize our partnerships with each of the municipalities is so very important to the work we do in serving the children and the families of Buncombe County, particularly right here in the town of Woodland. I was really excited to be joined by the vice mayor recently as we began to turn the dirt. Well, the, the children were turning the dirt on a new playground at Woodfin Elementary School that we're quite excited about. In my first month and a half, I've had the opportunity to visit all 45 of our schools across the county. And I can share with you that 45 times I left school absolutely blown away and excited by the talent and the expertise of our teachers, our faculty and staff, and the love and care they're showing each of our students. And so we're quite proud of the work of the school system, and I want to commit to you uh, and share with you my commitment to continuing to grow our partnership with the town of Woodland and each of our municipalities. And so again, thank you for the opportunity 
to uh, just briefly introduce myself and share with you that I'm looking forward to working with you in the years to come. And Mr. Mayor, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the members of the council may have or hear any comments, compliments, or concerns. Okay, anybody have any questions before, the, before we take any questions? <laughs> I'd like to say that you've got some big shoes to fill. Tony Baldwin was a close friend of mine for many years, but I'm familiar with your background and I'm sure you're going to fill the bill. So okay. with that, do we have any comments from the board? Question. <clears throat> any update on when construction on the playground might start? Thank you. So actually, I was, uh, had a conversation with Tim Fearley in our facilities office. We finalized all the selection of the pieces of the playground. The school and the school committee had to finish that piece. And now we're working through the global supply chain issues. And so <laughs> our goal is to have that in place by the end of the school year. Um, can be a little bit ambitious when we're waiting on things to show up from other places, but we are hoping to have that done by the end of the school year. And I'll certainly make sure that we keep you updated on how that's going. We're excited about it. it it's incredibly exciting. And I'm excited about it being an opportunity for members of the community to be on the campus of the school in the evenings and on the weekends as well. Our schools should be the front porch of every community, and that's, that's when we're at our best, when we recognize that partnership. And so we look forward to the walking track that will be a part of that playground and the playground equipment and uh, see that as adding value to the town of Woodfin. And so we, we do appreciate that partnership. And Mr. Mayor, if I may, I'll tell you, Tony Baldwin's one of my great heroes. Uh, many of us didn't think he would ever retire. You know, he was a superintendent for 14 years. I was serving on the coast in Atlantic Beach, and he gave me a call and uh, said, told me he was retiring and suggested I might consider applying. And that's a phone call that just... It's a career-making phone call when somebody you admire that much gives you a phone call like that. I, I love Tony Baldwin. Uh, if I may, um, I I was also at the groundbreaking. Thank you. I apologize for not. Oh no no no! Break. It was very cold. Yes, so I, <laughs> we, we were all huddled up. Were we? I, I <laughs> perhaps didn't stick around very long. Um, uh, Jim and I both are in a neighborhood as well as others that. Um, have supported the school for a number of years um, and I think that there's more community interest as we've kind of grown to know our other community partners and whatever and I think we all would like to do a deeper dive about what we can do for the school what would you suggest would be the appropriate medi medium to do that but first of all, thank you. I'm so excited just to hear that question. Um, Principal Roberts has shared with me the, um, the outpouring of support, even during the holidays, for Woodfin Elementary School. Um, I believe the school actually got to take a field trip that was funded by donations from the community. And so that kind of love coming from the community is what it takes for a school to really excel. And so working with... Um, uh, Principal Roberts and the school improvement team, which is the leadership team of the school, okay. is probably the best venue in terms of helping us all have our arrows aligned so okay. we're all going the same direction. Uh, but I want you to know that Principal Roberts and certainly myself are very open to, you know, over the last couple of years, it's a tough time for all of us, but particularly in education, mm -hmm. we weren't able to open our doors and we've been able to reopen our doors for volunteers and for those who'd like to come in and read to students and help us as teachers in that work. And you know, we haven't been able to do that in the past. And so now we're able to, of course, we have all the background screening and all the things you'd expect. Okay. Uh, but working with that school improvement team is probably okay. uh, the best avenue for that. And thank you so much for your support. I apologize for not. Oh, uh, no, we, I, uh, like I said, I, I scurried uh, away that day because I wasn't we dressed. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. I wasn't dressed appropriately for the weather. I wasn't so. expecting that cold either. Yeah, there wasn't that cold. Atlantic Beach. There right? you go. <laughs> well, thank you. We look forward to working with you. Thank you so much. Dr. Jackson, uh, uh, thank you for telling us that. We, we do look forward to working directly with the school, but there's some bigger issues. Um, the fact that the school lost track of almost two-thirds of the students when COVID hit, we've got to, as a county and as a town, we've got to make sure that that, that can never happen again. And I don't know what the answers are, but hopefully that will be part of your, your strategy as you get settled in. Uh, it's um, not a particularly well-to-do school, and we as a town and community and a county, we can do better than that. So we look forward to hearing plans to make things better in that area and make sure that never happens again. 
Thank you for sharing that. One of the things that I've challenged our leadership team, our principals and our central services leadership team is with telling our story. And so I shared with you my, a bit of my journey. I graduated from a public school. The opportunities I've had have been because of public schools. And um, thinking about things like market share is not what we've done a lot of in public education. And educators tend to, to not seek the limelight. And so they tend to not tell their story the way they should. And so we've not done that. And we have to do a better job of talking about the great things happening in our schools so that others, like community volunteers, want to be a part of what's happening. Um, we also have to be honest with the challenges because we do have to face some, some pretty major challenges. We've seen a degradation of, of family, of some of our sto social structures, and we depend on our schools to really uh, hedge that up to make sure our students have the support they need. And so working together, I'm very confident we'll do that. Um, and so we are looking at our data deeply, um, a meeting with each school leadership team individually, spending a full day in each school. And we're looking for those opportunities, whether it's third grade math or second grade reading, wherever it is we really need to hone in on to make sure that our students all graduate enrolled, enlisted, or employed. Our goal is 100% of our students walk across the stage and when they take that first step after shaking their principal's hand, they're prepared for what comes next. And so I believe in this school system and I'm looking forward to our finest years ahead of us, even though we have many, many incredible years behind us. Enrolled, enlisted, or employed. Or employed. That, that's great. I've never heard that. Absolutely. Well, we, we recognize, and, and I apologize for being a little long-winded, I, I can get excited when we start talking about the education of young people. And I know you've got an agenda and you were talking about it being a short agenda, so I'm not going to ruin that for you. <laughs> um, but in education, for a while, we thought every child needed to go to, to college. Well, that's not so. There's great success to be had for somebody working with their hands and getting graduating from high school, going into a great job where they can support themselves and their families. And so that employee piece of that, that three pathway enrolled, enlisted, employed is just as important as the other two. And so recognizing that helps us do a better job of meeting the needs of each of our children individually. I would ask about the volunteer program here at Woodfin because it has not started this year. And we're already halfway through the year. And that's been a concern for me. And I gather from my information is that it's just overwhelming for the leadership team that's there now and then trying to add this to it. I know some of the folks who have volunteered have never heard back. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of steps can they take? I mean, they really want to offer time and expertise, but are not getting calls back. Absolutely. So first of all, thank you for sharing that feedback with me so that I can follow up with Principal Roberts as soon as we return from our winter holidays. We're currently on our winter holiday break. Um, we do know, as you know, there was a change in leadership right. in the school this year. Um, I'm excited about, not speaking to what happened before, I just got here in November. Um, right. But I, I'm excited about where we are now. Um, as you know, from the pandemic, we really had to close down schools and not allow folks inside. And so restarting school and restarting all of our um, kind of infrastructure around that has taken some time. And that includes restarting volunteer background checks and making sure that our budget can withstand the onslaught of all of those who might have started to volunteer in the last two years who weren't able to, who all have now said, yes, I want to volunteer. And so that really has been a big push financially to get those through and for the uh, companies that do that. But we're at the point we've really caught up and so those roadblocks should be out of the way. And so I'd certainly encourage anyone who's interested to reach back out to the school, but I'm also going to reach out to Principal Roberts and make okay. sure that if there's Great. something we can do from the district to help the school, that we're doing that as well, because it does take all of us. It does. Thank you for that feature. Sure. I appreciate it. Hey, anything else? What a delight. Thank you again for the invitation. You come back anytime you want. Absolutely. Thank you. Well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, I'll slip down and get out of your way. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you, sir. Okay, next item, town manager report, Shannon. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I will also try to keep this fairly brief, but there are a few things I wanted to share with the council that have evolved over the last month. Um, so we always begin with just reviewing some of the contracts or purchase orders that have come through since we last met. Um, we have moved forward with a contract with Granicus, which is a software company. They were formerly known as Host Compliance. Um, they work to monitor short-term rental activity 
they have proprietary software that they use. So we've worked out um, what I think is a very uh, fair price um, for, for that. So um, it does take them, I'm trying to remember, I think 60 or 90 day lead time to kind of build um, their database. So we're waiting, we signed the contract, they started that work, so it's not um, launched yet, but I'll be sure to let you all know. Um, and then, as this board is aware, uh, we did approve the contract for ABCCM for the emergency aid. Um, that was part of our community grant program discussion. I put an asterisk next to the 25000 We actually committed 50000 but just given that we signed the contract at this point, halfway through the fiscal year, we just kind of cut that amount in half. To, and we're going to just sort of evaluate. We've discussed this with the ABCCM. They were perfectly comfortable with it. And we're just going to kind of see where we are at the end of the next fiscal year, and then hopefully we'll have more information, kind of know what to budget moving forward in the next fiscal year. And then the anchor QEA contract has not been signed; it's not approved. Um, that is later on your agenda, but it has come in this month, and so I just wanted to include that on this slide. Um, moving on to planning and stormwater, our town comprehensive plan is at the point where we are getting ready to do our kickoff meeting, which is now scheduled for the third week of January, um, the 17th through the 19th. Um, this will include a meeting with uh, the first meeting with our new uh, consultants, um, Quantum, and they are going to meet with our steering committee. They're going to meet with council members. We're going to be sending out uh, an agenda for you all. Because these, this kickoff period actually co coincides and overlaps your January council meeting, they're actually going to do a presentation at council as well. So you're going to get to see them on that agenda. Uh, and then our board of adjustment, just to give you a little information, we are planning some special meetings. At the last board of adjustment meeting, we sat down with the members to discuss sort of organizationally what to expect. We have six appeals pending for the board and we're trying to kind of map out a schedule where these can um, kind of get out of that limbo state that they've been in for quite a long time now. So we hope to tackle the first set of appeals uh, January 25th, 26th, 27th, and then that second set of appeals at the end of January, early February. Um, Still working with, uh, these dates were coordinated with the, um, the attorneys on both sides of the appeals as well as town staff, so um, that's what was so helpful about sitting down with our board members to be able to actually pull up calendars and make sure this worked for everybody, so. Shin, is, is that board full? It is. Okay. Yeah, um, based on your consent agenda, um, that included some a reappointment to the board, and then we did have one resignation um, Suzanne uh, Carver had been serving as our chair, has resigned, and so we moved our a, a really wonderful alternate. He's um, Chris Derone. He's been attending every single meeting. He's been really engaged. He's attended all of the trainings, and so he, we were able to move him right in. So we do have a full work. Um, planning and then continuing on planning and stormwater, our stormwater assessment and prioritization. I mentioned we did receive the contract. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail that in that uh, regarding that here shortly. Um, it, once that contract is approved, field work will occur during these sort of winter spring months, January uh, to April. The town hall, town center feasibility RFQ has been posted. Went out this week. Um, it's right before the holidays. I didn't want to make these prospective consultants angry at us right out of the gate, so I gave them a pretty extended deadline, so they have until February 10th to respond. Um, and so we're looking forward to seeing those uh, responses. Also, our building demolition and de debris removal RFP has been posted, and that deadline is February 13th. Sanitation. So it's very early days with our new program. Um, but we, if we compare data from November of this year to November first year, and November of this year is the first, this is the first full month where we've had our full size trash and recycling containers distributed to the residents. So we were really curious. We went back and looked at um, November's data, and it looks like from the previous year, and it looks like we we're saving about a thousand dollars a month in landfill tipping fees, and that is we expect is because of the increased recycling. Um, we don't have as good data or numbers about the recycling, but we hope that over the next few months we'll be able to get that and then be able to kind of really do 
a, a good tracking analysis so we really know what we're, we're getting. So the savings are wonderful, um, but our contract with Kirby did have to be re renegotiated this year, so that did include some cost increases. Um, so we're hopeful that this maybe offsets, this, the savings offset those um, increases in service. Staffing, um, the only vacancies we have left right now are in the police department. We did fill our police sergeant position, and that was um, filled internally, so Officer Andrew DeCamp um, has been promoted into the sergeant position, and he's already bringing really good uh, insight and um, um, participation to command staff, so it's, it's been a good start. We do have our four remaining vacancies, one detective and three patrol officers. We continue our recruitment process there. We are also now working with some police consultants. It's uh, former Buncombe County Sheriff Dan Duncan and former um, police chief Kevin Presley from Black Mountain. Um, both retired doing some consulting work. They've agreed to come in and meet with um, some of our uh, police department staff and go through what they call probably problem-based learning program. So we work as a team to identify the highest priorities of the department. They uh, work with that team to kind of tackle those problems and come up with recommendations and solutions. And then that gets shared broader with the rest of the staff and we figure out how we're going to achieve these things. Um, they'll meet once a week once the team gets started working through this process. Um, the consultants will offer some one-on-one -on -one coaching both to the team members as well as command staff. Hope to kind of make some strategic movement in our police department. And since I'm already up here, I'm going to dive right into new business on the first item, unless there are any questions about my report. So the first item under new business is the contract with Anchor QEA that I mentioned. This is for our stormwater inventory and assessment. <coughs> Just a very brief recap. Um, this started in 2019 when we received the notice from the Department of Environmental Quality regarding compliance with the town's MS4 permit. We did respond in 2020. We did follow-up response in 2021. That included, among other things, a commitment to do a proper inventory and assessment of our current system. We did do um, an identification inventory, but that isn't the full inventory that is needed to address um, the MS4 permit, so we actually have to find a consultant who can really assess the, the, um, the status or the, the integrity of our system, identify where needing improvements may be needed, um, and just really look at all of that comprehensively. So we posted the RFQ for that back in July. Anchor QEA was selected as the town's preferred consultant, and we, um, over the last month or so, we've negotiated the contract of $95,150. And per the town's contract and purchasing policy, town council must approve any contract over $90,000. Um, we do recommend approval of that contract. We do have the money in the stormwater budget to cover this. Um, the next item on your agenda is a budget amendment. It's our mid-year budget amendment. And that includes moving money from one line item in the stormwater budget to another in order to cover these costs. Um, so if for some reason you uh, not feel prepared to move forward with this contract, we would have to amend that particular budget amendment, but otherwise um, we have it already accounted for. Be happy to answer any questions. Question? They don't, so they don't, <clears throat> they don't think they're going to need a, a full robotic camera to do this inspection. I see that they're just quoting to have a, a hand-fed camera to inspect. And they think that's going to be sufficient for I, I think our, our system isn't like an Asheville system that has really long pipes. Um, so most of the pipe that we have are, are just pipes that go under a road and then daylight oh. on the other side. So I think they do feel like that would probably be sufficient. Okay. If you run across any particular problems for the follow-up, MSD has been known to lend their, use their people. Yeah. I was, use their cameras. <laughs> the city has one, too. We've lent it to, like, the housing authority. but. They're, they're folks that have those resources in the, in the region. All right, well, maybe we would just need a, a vote to approve that contract. Okay, next item, budget amendment. You ready? You ready for a motion, Mayor? Yeah. 
vote a motion on this. Oh, okay. I, I will if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. I recommend approval of the proposed contract for professional services <clears throat> with Anchor QEA in the amount of $95,950 for work included in the scope of services proposed. Okay, you've heard the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> okay, the motion carries. You're trying to get us out of here. Next item, budget. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Um, Shannon did a great introduction to the mid year budget amendment. The um, larger items on the budget amendment in your packet are the anchor QBA contract and then the community grant um, offerings that you all approved at our last board meeting. With any mid-year amendment, we look at the budget first to see if there are savings in other areas that we can reduce and not increase the overall budget level. So you'll see some reductions in that decrease column to try and offset those additional costs. And uh, then secondly, we look at revenue items that we know will achieve more than the originally budget amount and use those items to fund any increases before finally getting fund balance if we have to, and in this case, we didn't have to do that. So um, if there are any questions about the budget, I mean, I, we have what the community budget. grant problem, what all does that is, uh, system? Um, yeah, so at the last meeting, you approved $6,000 to Catholic Charities, um, 50 overall to ABCCM, although we're only appropriating 25000 this year, and the remaining part of that contract will be from the next fiscal year. Um, we did 50000 to ABCLT, the housing group, and 2500 to Riverlake. What, what, and we approved that housing group? Yes, sir. Uh, we are, we are. I'm we his have, We have let them know that they've been approved for the award. They are looking to leverage our funding with Buckham County so that they can mostly fund a residence in Woodfin and We'll be drafting a contract based on that. We won't actually write a check. And, and it has to stay here, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. It, um, we, we won't write any money until they're ready to close on the property. Okay. Um, I missed that somehow. I must have been drinking coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? I have a question. Yeah. <clears throat> Object number 910 is Woodfin Golden Age Club. And Maybe I'm misremembering, but I thought that they did not reapply. Yeah, that's a decrease. So we were oh, we a decrease. Really I see it. Amount. It's right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I have a motion for the budget amendment. I'll make the motion. Second. I Second. <laughs> Any discussion? Favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Mr. Mayor, you can meet with the council until 6 05 p.m. Where are we finished? We're, we're finished with the regular agenda meeting. Okay, before we do that, um, I'd like to ask the chief of police a question about his re about your report for uh, the November monthly report. It looks like citations, traffic citations, are down dramatically over last same time last year. Okay, is that true? Probably. If that's what the numbers, I don't have the numbers in front of me. Okay. Uh, it says 20 year to date. I don't guess you're going to tell me all 20 of those are on Riverside Drive, are you? Probably not. Probably a few, but not not all of them. No. Chief. We've, we've talked about this repeatedly, and um, quite frankly, I'm, I'm running out of patience. We have to do something. Uh, the residents, I don't know if, the, if those people from Riverwalk have just given up and didn't come tonight. They've come to every meeting begging us to do something, and we've, we've sat and we've talked about it with Shannon. I, I, I need to know what it's going to take. What can we do as a council to help you do something about the crazy traffic problems on Riverside Drive? We've talked about this and speed enforcement on that road yes, is sir. difficult. And I actually I invite you to come ride with me. And I will show you how difficult traffic enforcement is on Riverside Drive. 
but we are making a presence in the area, areas where we have speed complaints. We're trying to get there and make that happen. Um, but that's just one of those locations. It's hard to do speed enforcement. So I understand it. We, we are there making a presence, but that doesn't mean that there's going to be more citations. I spent three Saturdays ago, several hours driving up and down and making notes and measuring. There are, and I look forward to riding with you. If you'll shoot me some dates, okay. I'll take you up on that. But, and, and maybe I just don't understand what it takes to pull somebody over, but um, we have to do something. And um, so I look forward to working with you on that. That's it. We, 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 we know it's an area of concern and we are committed to, to making you know, that area safer, without a doubt. That's always our goal is to make the roadways safer. Uh, but again, that doesn't always necessarily mean more traffic citations. Um, and with a roadway such as Riverside Drive, where it's curvy and narrow and no shoulders, traffic enforcement, you know, speed enforcement especially, is difficult to, to perform down there. But I, I, you know, I'll show you what we, we do have available. I'll show you where officers have been. Um, and you know, we, we'll pull up some, some numbers and, and try to see what we can do to improve that. Uh, but you know, there's. Again, only so many of our officers right now who are certified in radar and have the equipment available to them, um, you know, and then also call volume is, that takes away from their ability to do that. We, we definitely want to make that a priority, and we have made it a priority. Is again, just not always going to show the citations. Okay, and I remember the last when we met with Shannon, you said that you have an adequate number who are trained in doing radar. That that was not that would not be an issue. We're working on getting working. This. We said well, not all of them are trained. We're working on that. Other things. That it's, you know, but also answering calls for service or having folks out, things like that. So we're, again, it's a, we're getting there. And I appreciate that and I look forward to working with you. What I don't want to do is end up here sometime this winter after a horrific crash and one of Eric's neighbors being involved in kids. And it's going to happen sooner or later. So uh, shoot me some dates. I look forward to riding with you and learning, learning more about it. Okay. Thank you. Um, along those lines, I'll just go ahead and share. It's a little, we haven't yet submitted the grant application, but the town has identified a grant opportunity uh, for a feasibility study for certain pedestrian improvements along Riverside Drive. Um, I think the deadline is in January, early January. So we're working with Land of Sky on, on making that application. Great. So we're optimistic that we might get some grant funding for that study. Um, and then that would allow us to really study that corridor and look at those physical constraints and figure out what kind of improvements might be realistic. Um, and then we can look at how to design and fund that. Well, no, I've spoken with our local legislators and they've assured us that if, it, if they need help, we'll, I've told them, I'll, Caleb, I'll physically come to Raleigh. We'll meet with the DOT people, but it, you know, we're just not gonna, it, it's hard, can't be the obstacle. So that's great news that we may be able to get some grant money. I think yes. that's fantastic. I think a feasibility study will be very informative. Like it'll really help awesome. us understand what our options are. Um, we also have just this week submitted a grant application for a greenway connection, potential feasibility study for a greenway connection between the northern end of our Fleming Woodfin Greenway and the southern end of Weaverville's great. Creek Greenway. So, um, and this is in cooperation with uh, the town of Weaverville. So we're kind of trying to collaborate on that together. That's great. Thank you. Jim, follow up some. I've, I've noticed my road's always been real dangerous. Uh, it's a cut through from Riverside Drive to Merriman Avenue. We've had several accidents over the years down there. But I've noticed since the big diet on Merriman Avenue that apparently a lot more people is using our roads, Jonestown, yeah. Burnsville Hill, yeah. um, Elk Mountain. Um, and I'm afraid that traffic's just going to get worse, uh, unfortunately. You're right. Mm. I'm not. I, I wonder, and I know Woodfin does a great job. Um, Chief, are they it's being state roads? Can we ask the Highway Patrol to help, or they won't? Or? We can always ask the Highway Patrol to help. Not that they will. For all the roadways yeah. in all of the state, uh, or all the state maintained roadways in all the state. Um, I mean, I just. But, Busy like y'all. Responsibility usually ends up in the unincorporated areas uh, where they're busy working crashes and trying sure. to speed enforcement. Sure. Um, you know, I'd love to have seen a trooper today when a guy passed me on 26 uh, outside of the jurisdiction <laughs> running 90 miles an hour plus. But, you know, they're just like us. They're not always where you'd like them to be at the time you need them to be there. Yeah, I understand. Thank you. 
Okay, anything else come before the board? Well, I hope everybody has a happy holiday season. You too. And uh, Merry Christmas. With that, happy we have a motion that we, we, we have to have a closed session? Yeah, I think it'll be really brief. Okay. I have a motion to close this meeting and go into closed session. So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. It has, to be, it has to be a record. A record. <laughs> <laughs>